today on Kicks Chronicles. We continue to talk life and kicks with Foot Patrol's marketing manager, Bradley Martinez. I challenge Bradley to a beta sneaker battle. <laughs> Say that three times fast. His top three versus my top three. We talk about the infamous Sneakers Day Live, Nike, Cheetah Print, Harachi. <laughs> He tells us the crazy story behind that kick. And lastly, he tells us what two pairs of shoes he would take with him if he was stranded on a desert island. This is Kicks Chronicles. Yes, yes, my people. Big Posey back again. You already know what it is. Kicks Chronicles. Now your sneaker and lifestyle podcast. Episode 80. 80 in the bag. You get me? I appreciate everybody listening, watching. You get me? We're here, the outside. I'm your boy Prozac. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone that watched part one uh, with Bradley at that job last week. Watched, listened to, big up yourself. Like much appreciation for everyone that supported the clips and everything that like, all of that. If you didn't manage to c- catch it. Obviously, go and listen to that before you listen to this. And that's available everywhere you get podcasts. And make sure to go and do that. Obviously, this week is part two. But before we get into part two with Bradley, I want to have a quick chat. So let me talk to you. You get me? Um, This has been an amazing week. I can't lie. Um, Not just an amazing week, but an amazing day. An amazing day. Um, A lot of people are going to have seen, heard about Kicks and Coffee the latest sneaker festival in the UK. Big up Joel and everything that he's doing. As we speak right now, that happened yesterday. Right? And you're thinking, if that happened yesterday, she was a Saturday, I'm talking to you on a Sunday, which is when the, the pod drops. It's really late right now. You get me? Um, but we move. Yeah. So, as you see from our social and kicks and coffee socials there was an announcement this week that i'd be doing a live kicks chronicles q a at the event also i'd be hosting uh or presenting at the event um it was an amazing event sponsored by the likes of soul supplier soul the sustainability and jason mark everyone knows jason mark um really really cool event um easily five six hundred people came down space was huge I but it was just like such a lovely vibe i can't lie it was a lovely owes me nothing joe's just an amazing guy he gave me this opportunity and hopefully i didn't let him down i really really enjoyed myself um there was just so many familiar faces the vibe in the room was just beautiful you get me like everyone just wanted to like, I was just feeling positivity. You get me? I was able to interview George Sullivan. We got George from Soul Supplier, Musa from Resol, Jeff from Jason Mark. I'm um, along with a load of other people. We were able to do that live Q&A and just have a chat. I was chatting for like an hour. You get me? Maybe even longer. We did so many giveaways as well. Like, it was really amazing at how much we were able to give back yeah, i say we like i was involved but like i was a little bit involved you get me at least i pulled a couple of the tickets out and that <laughs> but like the positivity in the room was palpable like it was an awesome event to be a part of and you could obviously tell like i said the, the, the first time i went to kicks and coffee you can easily tell the trajectory of this is just gonna keep on going up and up and up like this is the start of something amazing um, and I'm so glad to have been given the opportunity to to present and to and to hold the mic for a little bit like it was a blessing still. Um, the vibe in the room was just so lovely, calm, chilled. It like the, the we need to talk about kicks and coffee. And I always say this to Joe, like it's such a the coffee shop is kind of referred to as that third place. Like the the phenomenon, that third place phenomenon, the idea that you have your home where you feel comfortable, you have work where you can like coach and feel comfortable, but you also have that third place where you can also sit down, feel comfortable, feel at home, chill, relax, or work or do or whatever you want. And it really had that element. People were chilling, like it was actually cool. So many vendors, people were selling, like so many giveaways. Like I was selling, uh, like I was saying before. 
Um, yeah, the vibe was just super, super lovely. Like, just a lovely, lovely vibe. And the community just came out in full force. Uh, because it was so community focused and community centric, um, and there was so much giving back. The tickets were super cheap. Even on the door, they were only ten pound. You get me? If you'd have bought before, they were six pound, um, or there were thereabouts. Like it was sick. Um, so yeah, if you didn't get a chance to come down to Kicks and Coffee, um, this one, he did announced that the next one is happening in september so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that one and i'm telling you right now it's only going to be bigger only going to be better only going to be more big brand involvement only going to be more focus on it really really awesome event absolute blessing for me to be involved i will be at the next one without a shadow of a doubt uh, in any capacity you get me like so yeah and all the content that happen that day it can happen i'm getting all of it i'm getting all of it i don't worry you guys are gonna be inside when it comes to that you're gonna see everything you're gonna hear everything like i'm getting all of that content i'm saying there were some great answers some great questions it was a great vibe you get me someone started break dancing in the middle of the thing it was kind of wild actually <laughs> but keep your eyes peeled because you might see that one on my social media very very soon you get me? But yeah, all all in all, a lovely, lovely day. Yeah, I just wanted to give my initial thoughts while it was fresh in my mind. You get me? Because it was just such a lovely experience. You get me? I'm really, really trying to to be out here. I told you people I'm outside. I told you, man. Prozy twenty twenty four, Prozy's outside, you get me? Um going to more events, but I'd never thought in my mind I'd get the opportunity to actually present or host an event. Um, and actually get on the mic and be able to interact with the people. I want to do that. You know, this is what I want to do in life. You get me? Like, so the opportunity to do that this so early was amazing. And I just have to big up Joe and thank God once again. Um, this week, once again, our guest is the amazing Bradley Martinez. If you didn't catch part, listen to part one. The guy was just dropping gems. He's marketing manager at Foot Patrol, but he's journey to get to that position was really really interesting so many twists and turns and throughout that whole process his love and passion for kicks just continued to grow and intensify and he talks about all of that we talk a little bit about his collection in this episode um he gives a little bit more insight about sort of uh what life is like um in in, in his position but i also challenge him to a sneaker battle because you know like when guests come onto my podcast even though i'm a very gracious host i don't want no one to sit too easy i want them to understand yeah that at any moment just like randy or man could pull out a sneaker battle you get me like and this was a little bit avant-garde a little bit different because Bradley's one of them guys this is a beater sneaker battle aka the shoe that we wear the most the three, the three shoes we wear the most. His top three versus my top three. And you guys are going to tell us what top three were the best top three in terms of our beaters. Um, he also tells us an amazing story. Like, an amazing story about, like, a few years ago, there was a sneakers day. And the principal kick for that day was a Peter Print Harachi wild literally the wildest thing i've ever seen if you don't know if you've not seen it please google it that is i can't say it i don't know how to say it in a nice way it's a terrible shoe it's a terrible shoe not a harachi just a colorway just that whole thing was mad you get me um but funnily enough bradley was invited as a guest <laughs> on that Sneakers Day Live. <laughs> His role was to talk about that shoe. <laughs> and he tells us what he tried to do to navigate <laughs> his disdain for the shoe. <laughs> yeah, man. Man was not feeling that shoe. Yeah, and he had to be true and be honest to himself. And yeah, he tells the story, man, and it's an amazing story of what to to be able to explain to to Nike. Like, 
I'm not feeling the shoe, you get me? So, yeah, I will leave that up for him to, to, to explain the story and share that with you people. But, yeah, please make sure to stick around to listen to that. You get me? That was a really, really interesting story. And, yeah, um, we get into some quick fires. And he tells us what two pairs of shoes he would take of him if he were stranded on a desert island. All in all, Bradley is an amazing guy, amazing guest. Love to have him on the pod once again. You get me? I hope you find this interview the whole thing, the two parts, interesting, entertaining. I hope you've learned something because I certainly have. Like, he's a fountain of wisdom and knowledge. And, yeah, it's been an absolute blessing to be able to speak to him. Um, continue to support us, guys, and we continue to reach out to these people in the industry and give us these insights. We can use these nuggets to try and make art and forge our own paths. You get me? Guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. you got to do that. Social 321, support the pod. You get me? Pitch Chronicles 100 is fast approaching. I got some big ideas. Even today, or well, yesterday, I uh, kicked some coffee. Like, I spoke to some people. Things might be bubbling. You get me? Things might be, yeah. We're 20 episodes away. It's mad. You get me? But yeah, I think it'll be really, really cool in the end. Like, guys, continue to make sure to, to, to hit me up. Tell me who you want us to see interview on what you want us to do how you want us to celebrate that 100 episodes because i initially had in my mind that we would interview somebody really big or interview a few people really big but maybe that's not what uh this community wants maybe they want something else maybe you want an event maybe you want to do something community based you get me um you let me know in the in the, in the comments and the reviews you get me I'm talking about reviews five stars only right whether you like it or not just give me the five stars and we can chat about it in the the comments you get me i love you <laughs> and with all of that being said i'm your boy bro that this is kiss chronicles and today our guest in part two of his interview is foot patrols bradley martinez enjoy never bro can i ask you a question in terms of like in terms of design because this is something that's always sort of uh it's always come to mind especially when it, like in your case where like your day job isn't a quote unquote designer mm. so you're not like constantly designing kicks but you're in an, you're in the industry and you're close enough that an opportunity like that can come how much and i hope i hope i can articulate this question in a, in a way that makes you understand where i'm coming from how much of yourself do you give to that process um for me for like for those that know me like that was a hundred percent me. Um, that was, okay. you know, it, I couldn't have <laughs> the marketable kind of like side of it was very much not there. Like people aren't into the story because they don't really care about the snow boot. People don't really yeah. know anything about car who's archive like that. The only thing about people know is probably when you open the box leak and it tells you that they once upon a time used to own the three stripes and Addy bought it from them. Do you know what I mean? So it's, and like, there's an interesting story about that. Apparently it was done for like a, you know, a couple grand and a bottle of whiskey or something like that was how they like knocked up the deal. Um, but like, for me, it was for those that like, for, for, for my, my good friends that know me, they know that like everything that I'm into, everything that I enjoy about this industry, the history of where things are, to take things to where they are, to like from where they were, sorry, to take them to where they are today is what went into that shoe. It was like, right, here's a, winterized boot from the 80s that i really like how can i make that a more like modernized city version that has some form of like durable com like components to it um and that and that is kind of how it did so for me the storytelling wasn't about trying to you know bore people with the history but like if mm -hmm. you knew me and knew that i worked on that shoe and you knew where i got the idea from you'd be like oh yeah I, it's definitely a bradley shoe like i love that that's that's how i sort of envisioned it to be um but yeah man like i i mean that was two years of back and forth in on like samples and things like that to to get it to where it was and when it launched i was like bro there's a shoe i made that's on the market that's so it's unbelievable bro <laughs> it's so crazy bro it's so crazy man yeah like sometimes because the thing is like i just think about like when 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 i was a kid and when I would like flip through the catalog and I would see like the the Reebok Classic or 
some other some other shoe where it's like I would look at Reba Class is a good example where it was like in my mind I'm like that shoe's design is so simple. Like it's 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 really, really simple, but like look at the colours, look at the array of different colours that, that could fit the various different types of personalities and people. So everyone can wear this shoe and I go to my school, like especially in my secondary school, and I'm seeing like seventy five percent of the school rocking the shoe. Mm. And I'm like, how do you design a shoe that is it that gets like the majority of people like I want to wear this shoe and it's so it's so amazing bro like to be involved in a process like that and that's always boggled my mind like those designs that like because there are loads of kicks on the market but there are certain there were certain silhouettes that just like click Mm -hmm. with a generation or just click with people and it's like that's a popular silhouette that works maybe it's about simplicity maybe it's about timing maybe it's about all of those things but but yeah it's always resonated with me man and being able to speak to somebody who's actually been through that process is actually sick. Yeah. So, my like, congratulations to you, man. I appreciate it. Like, like I said, I, uh, you know, I should have thought about it with a little bit more of a trend mindset, right? Like, what works? What are people into? Like, in theory, I could have won a white and baby pink pair, and it probably would have sold better, right? But in my head, like, if I did that, yeah, okay, I love pink shoes, and I like, I, my favorite color is pink, all that jazz. But like, if I was to come up with a concept that I went and truly believe it was like something that I can like embody is like what my interests are in this industry. Like that's kind of how I envisioned it to be. Um, and then anything that comes after, and if I ever do get the opportunity to do that again, it's going to be different. Like I'm not going to mm. think with the, what do I like mindset? I'm going to think with like, what do I think works? What's, you know, what's the market looking for? See if there's, mm. see if you can change the narrative and, and actually try and make a successful launch rather than just a, a, a product story that you just sort of believe in, in, in yourself. I get you, bro. Uh, let's change gears a little bit, man. Go on. If you were uh, just bop into the shops. Yeah. Like just running out your house, like not thinking about a fit, you get me? Not thinking about anything too, too, too laborious or strenuous. Just like, just what shoe is right next to your front door that you just grab and you just go with it? Now, what's that shoe? Uh, it's a Norda 001. <laughs> yeah, what the hell yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get it? These things. Oh, my days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the thing, man. Like, people can sit and cuss me all day, like, but, like, I've been I've been mad in love with this shoe since I discovered this brand. Um, I've got five pairs of this shoe, and I shouldn't have five pairs of this shoe because it's, like, the most... Norders, yeah? Yeah, Norders. I, I love them. I love them. Everything they do, everything the brand stands for, like, it's the most durable running shoe on the market. Trail running shoe, lost 750-plus kilometers worth of, like, trail running. I've probably walked God knows how many hundreds of kilometers in these and they're still absolutely blessed, like made out of this wicked fabric called the uh, Biodyneema. So they're a little bit more like consciously made, better for the environment, but because of the durability, they're a lot more sustainable than what you're going to get from brands that's sustainable. So when they say, oh, it's a shoe with sustainable materials, you then need to start thinking about the durability and the impact that it actually has to the composition of the actual product when they, when they actually finalize it. Whereas this is they've gone for, right, well, composition means everything. If we're going to use more bio-based materials, then those bio-based materials need to be that much stronger. And biodynema um, and graphene are like two of the strongest like materials in the world. And that in itself then means some people run 3,000 kilometers in the shoe and it's still still wearable. So it's like, that's madness. So this is like, for me, it's like my go-to shoe. I literally was wearing this every day in Glasgow over the weekend. I wear them pretty much every day on a day-to-day basis. Like they're a great brand, really lovely people that work for them. I love their story. They're super young as well. So there's a lot more to come. They've only got two shoes or three shoes now, 001, a 002 and a 003. And like, they're all race day shoes. I'm on. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the website now. I still it's got the Vibram outsole, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I forgot, yeah, I saw oh, that. See saw. the waves as well, grippy. So this little wave pattern here, uh, they design themselves is based off the Canadian Shield like topography. Okay. Um, and they ended up 
and I, I I did a little interview for them. Just I I just had a call with them just to speak to them for the sake of speaking to them for fun because I love their stuff. And um, they were telling me how by mere mistake this um, Canadian shield pattern ended up actually being so like being grippier than what was originally on there. Uh, it. But yeah, the, that's that's my go-to man for go shops. Do you know what? Yeah, did, did, um, what we need to do, yeah, right? Because now you've got you, you're talking about like the kicks that you just reach out for and just are ready to go, yeah, man. Let's talk about let's 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 do a little sneaker battle, like right. let's do a little All sneaker right. battle. And this is gonna be a different kind of battle. You get me? This ain't gonna be your basic ones, your Air Force ones, your Max ones, bro. Let's talk about the kicks, yeah, that we wear the most. Yeah, you get me? This is a sneaker battle like none other, bro. Our most worn kicks. <laughs> you get me? And you know what, yeah, Bradley Martinez, football show, man. I have to put some respect to your name, man, because I feel like you got that deeper collection, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm not intimidated by no man. You get <laughs> But if I should be intimidated by you, my, my, three, my three pairs are boring. It's a black pair, a grey pair, and a black and grey pair. Yeah, I think I think I think my color rings are kind of similar uh, still. Let's not go too far, All right, bro. Because of my illustrious guest, as I said at the beginning of the show, I'm gonna let you go first, Ma. I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, uh, no, go ahead. Number one is the Norda. Like, yeah, like I said, yeah, I, we I wear this. That. I wear the shoe all the time. Anyone that knows me will probably see a picture of me wearing Norda somewhere. Um, might not just be this color. Might be another one. But that, yeah, I wear this literally every day. Strong shoe. Strong shoe, literally a strong shoe. If you've not seen it, go and take a picture. Go and take a picture. That's, that's a strong, that's a, that's a handsome shoe, bro. As I'm saying, that's got some weight to it. All right, bro. I'm gonna go with yeah. I'm gonna go with because I was, I was thinking, you know what, like what I draw for regularly, mm. and I have to be real, like. In, in the last few months, definitely since the turn of the year, these shoes have stayed on my feet. And I'm going to start with the Saucony J-Tips, uh, Good Shadow 2s. Yeah. What the occasion is just above my head here. You get me? I've got the brown colorway. Um, just took them on my holiday. Just it's hard to just, because of the comfort and because of the fact that, like, I'm a, I really keep a simple palette in terms of my clothing. I'm really quite monotone. So, like, I love it when my shoes just pop, man. Mm. So, like, yeah. Yeah, that shoe just does a lot for me, and the materials are great. Uh, the stories of J Tips are crazy. So yeah, man. Yeah, we shout out to J Tips. He's got some, yeah, like the stuff he's done recently, especially on the the Omni Nine. Like, it's crazy, man. Like he's yeah. he's he's really re-energized a brand that, like, if you, I just love it, bro. bro. Like when the days they were popping, right? You were getting collabs from like Extra Butter when they're doing Space Snacks, for example, or. I'm not just to plug it for the namesakes, but that foot patrol's on me. That foot patrol pair, bro. Yeah. That's a sick pair. I, I, that was what, bro, uh, about two or three episodes ago, I had uh, all the, uh, all that sneaks and literally one of my top three Saucony's, bro, is that Soho pair for foot patrol. I called it out, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're the best. They're the best. I've, I've got mine on the That market. Soho pair is crazy, bro. They're crazy. Have you ever seen the sample? No, bro, I haven't seen the so There was a, a sample that is essentially the only in Soho, but rather than the blue mud guard. Um it's a it's a grey mud guard. Oh, that's uh, crazy. But there's there's a there's a, a funny story that I'm sure uh she might mind me saying. So obviously that, that shoe as a rule is known as like the Soho Knights, right? Like what Soho looks like when it's lit up. Um but there's like a deeper backstory to it. Um, Jeez. So Sheebs is uh EU 39, right? She's a small foot. Um, and when the, when the Hirachi Ultramarine, uh, sorry, the Hirachi Light Ultramarines um, came out, the blue pair with the black armor, yeah, 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 yeah. come in her size. <laughs> she made her shoe. That's obviously, <laughs> that's so terrible. Yeah, yeah. She made her shoe. She was like, I want that shoe, man. So how can I make that she shoe? Made- Bro, she made a she shoot, and I respect up, it. Yeah, she came up with this concept with Soho yeah. Nights, and then like, yeah, it just naturally translated as like, oh, just now just I'm sold it to everybody. <laughs> and like, when they, when everyone okayed it, <laughs> she, yeah. she's nudging, she's nudging. <laughs> I don't know, she's she nudging Bradley like I did it, bro. Like, <laughs> nah, I told you, I was there. 
I was long before me, innit? But yeah, he, he oh, no, I respect it. And I was just, no, yeah, that's so you're sick. sick. You're too sick. <laughs> so, like, I would too. <laughs> Bro, I would. I fully <laughs> would. Oh, my days, I fully would, man. I fully would. And when you're in that position, it's so hard. It'd be so hard not to. It'd be so hard not to. Ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, no, that's it, man. Respect, respect to the to, to, to my girl for doing that stuff. All right, bro, you're up, man. What's your number two? All right, so number two is a little bit more of a recent release. Um, now, I pretty much, I pretty much have not taken these off my feet since I bought them, but it's the um, Gel Quantum 8 uh, Asics, but with CP Company. Respect. Um, respect. I'm a, I mean, like, I'm a scruff for Stone Island and the CP, I have been for the most amount of time. I uh, was fortunate enough to go to their archive um, start of this year to go do a little shoot on these. And like, obviously for me, it was like a, you know, like a, like a dream come true, getting to see the, the history of Massimo Osti and like everything that he's done and with the brand with CP and, and learning what they do now and why they do it. And obviously like the shoe is, is you know it's it's not it's not this particular colorway as well like it's it's sleeker it's a little bit smarter i'm definitely gonna buy the yellow pair as well like they're 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 coming home i want both colorways but it's it's more so the fact besides the fact that cp company it's the gel quantum is probably one of the comfiest shoes on the market one of the most comfiest ranges of shoes i remember. i hear that i bought the Atmos, I mean, it was an Insta360, which is basically a gel quantum, slightly different, but an Atmos pair, all black suede, and then like it was a perforated, like ASIC stripe logo. And they, like, you'd had sort of silver shining through the perforations. And I would never take them off because of how comfy they are. And it's like, it's the same with these, it's just they're so comfortable. And it's, it just adds to me that like the toe box shape when you got them on, bad boy. And it's, Mm. the fact that they're cp company and i think for me there's always like a, it tends to be sentimentality with it but i think going there and getting to see the behind the scenes these were definitely um yeah definitely like a meaningful pair but also like bro, like, I, like i said i just haven't taken them wearing them today wearing them wearing them yesterday other than when i went to glasgow because it was raining i took one orders but mm. prior to the literally the day i bought them they've been on my feet every day yeah, I respect that store. I respect that man. Shout out to C- uh, CP companies coming with the it's coming with the big gun store. <laughs> the A six, right? My number two, right, is a shoe that, like, I I feel like I, I felt like I prayed for this shoe. Oh, okay. And then yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, 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 because because I slept, I was not on the original wave mm. and you're gonna maybe you'll catch it from when i say it i wasn't on the original wave but when that when that second wave came in i was ready i was ready to right, right. to ride still so i'm gonna I'm grab it yeah you. yeah sick that's a good pair i think man that's a good bro, pair bro like this this shoe this shoe is life to me bro Ski. Like this year's life to me, man. God knows my heart, man. I love, I love my, my 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 family and all that. But like, don't ask me too quickly to choose between this thing and something else because the wrong answer might come out, bro. Mm. The wrong answer might come out. This is yeah. The wave runners to me are like in terms of Adidas Yeezys. This is the best Adidas Yeezy that, that was ever done. Um, like he. Like this gave birth to a lot as well, and I, 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 with with respect as well. Like shout out to New Balance and and them man there. Like I felt like, um, like like Adidas Adidas didn't have identity in the dance shoe market. Like, and I feel like it reinvigorated that whole wave as well. Like, so yeah, um, it just it just it just it just does a lot for me. Uh, comfort, like the funny thing is, it is comfortable, mm. but it's not as comfortable as like a three fifty V two. So don't get it wrong, like, but it's still super comfortable in terms of in terms of the type of shoe that it is, and like it is just like a legendary kick. Like, um, yeah, I thought I spoke to about I spoke about Kanye earlier. He is my guy, and it's for it's for kicks like this as well. Like it's hard for me to 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 turn my back on man because the kind of brain that can figure out this thing, like. 
you got to give man yeah. a second chance. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like that shoe for me was probably my favorite Adidas Yeezy that he's ever done. I think I yeah. wish I got that colorway um, so bad. Like I've always deliberated buying other colorways, but I'm just like, nah, man. If it's not that, if it's not that grey and blue pair, like I'm, I'm just yeah. It's just it just looks so good on foot. Bro, like, I've seen it on so many different types of... This is another thing. This is one of the ways I gauge whether a shoe is just whether whether I like it or whether it is, like, a generational type mm. shoe. And I've just seen it on so many different types of people. Yeah. For me to know, like, there's certain shoes that just look good no yeah, matter who's yeah. wearing them. And I just love that. I love that about a shoe. Like, as a compliment, like, I don't think there's too many higher compliments you can get to a designer to say that shoe looks good no matter who's wearing it. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily about the person. The shoe just does its thing. Yeah. Like, and it just elevates whatever you're wearing or whatever. You don't have to. Another thing, like, when I was saying about what I wear, I don't have to match that. Yeah. I'm wearing what that, that shoe matches me. You get me? Like, so it was made for me, like, and just a little proper colour. So, yeah, like, it did, it, that did a lot still. So, yeah, man, Wave Runner's in at number two. What's your number three? What's your, what's your last one? Is it number three or number one? Who knows? At oh, this, point? This, this is, this is, like, <laughs> this is, I think, like, I think it's exactly what you said. Is it one? Is it number two or is it number three? I don't number one or number three. I don't know, but it, it's the Mac Attack. Whoa! Okay, okay. I have been like prior to this release, I have been on so many consumer insights saying, "Bring back the Mac Attack." Bring back. Are you serious? Mac Attack, bring back the Mac Attack. And when they said it was dropping, I remember my my old boss John being like, "Oh, just a heads up." Mac Attack's coming back. And I was like, finally. <laughs> finally. I was like, I don't even care. Like, this isn't this isn't for the people. This is for me. I don't care. This is me. This is this me. Is me. I respect it. Um, I respect again, it. Again, like, I was very fortunate enough that um, someone in the, like, sneakers team uh, sent me the pair. They, they knew that I was a, a bit of a sweat when it came to Mac Attack. So probably, again, like, with like the Harachis, right? This is probably in like my top five favorite silhouettes. Um, obviously, besides the history and everything like that, I just think the paneling, everything, the aesthetic, it being like a three quarter cut. Uh, people tell me it's hard to wear. I think they're just tripping and they don't know how to wear, like how to dress themselves. I don't know. I find it very easy personally. But yeah, these these are. I've got a pair on hold waiting to double up and then I think I might end up getting a triple up because like I don't want this shoe to like ever deteriorate because I know you can buy some OG pairs out there and they're still wearable right but like I want to be able to have that re-release pair in like 10 years time and still be able to wear that release that re-release pair like it's just everything like as, as a as a retro yeah this is so good like slightly different paneling slightly different meshes all that kind of stuff but in terms of mm. colorway like how it's all laid out it's 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 probably one of the closest attempts nike has done into actually like remaking a retro of a shoe i love when they do that do you know what i mean like it's so close and for me oh, i, was like, I yeah, love bro, when they do give that. me that like would you was you tempted at all to go for the for the for the travis yeah bro? man 100 percent. give me that backward swoosh i'm here for that <laughs> like give me that like, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, it's all about the hype, bro. It's still a, it's still a black and grey Mac attack. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, <laughs> it's the same thing. I take, I, yeah. I let that be my third pair for the triple up. Hundred, hundred, hundred. I mean, I, I feel like the marketing for that was so good as well. Did you it was think really, really I good. was, I was <laughs> hit and miss, man. Like, I prefer the initial marketing that when you had Travis and McElroy playing tennis to launch this one. Uh-huh. I was yeah, more yeah. on that than I was in the second wave of the marketing. I was kind of like, all right, like, Personally, I preferred the kind of like vintage advert more so. I get you. The, I get like, PR stuff. Yeah. I was, I was uh, like, when I saw like, because uh, for those that are sort of, um, uh, so everyone's on the same page, I was referring to the the sort of like the Zoom call, um, whether it was real or not, I doubt it was real, but like the, the whole back and forth between Travis and John McEnroe on the Zoom call, kind of Travis trying to explain to John that basically I know the culture, so I know what we need to do with your shoe. Just sit back, old man. Let me take over from here. I got this. You get me? I got the culture in the palm of my hand, G. Let me cook. <laughs> 
Mm. And then and then and then John McEnroe doing like crossing out the cactus jack and putting cactus man mm. and then, that, that that those bits and pieces on there I thought we were kinda of cute still. So yeah, yeah. But I get where you're coming from as well, man. That's a vibes issue, bro. It's a vibes issue, man. And the thing is, yeah, as well, with that shoe, like Initially, I didn't really have much of a connection. My brother is a massive tennis fan, mm. huge um, Boris Becker and John McEnroe fan. So from that perspective, it was kind of nostalgic. But I didn't really have a massive connection to the shoe. Um, but um, by the end, and when it started to drop, I started to feel something for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so definitely, I definitely feel like they did their job, man. And I've seen some colorways coming out as well. Uh, that look crazy. Mm. Um, so yeah, man, you never know, man. Watch this space, man. So the last one, yeah, for me, Right, um, and I, I'm just gonna have to be real with it, yeah. I'm gonna I'm lay this out there for everybody, yeah, man. I am a father, <laughs> I'm a husband, right, and basically the whole clan has a pair of these, bro. Okay, and yeah, yeah, everyone's got a pair of these, man, and it's just one of them ones where it's like everyone's got a pair, we all have it, and I think probably everyone listening might have a pair of these as well. I must say the pandas, they're downstairs by the door where they normally are. You get me, man? And I'm not as, I'm, I'm not as forward thinking as some other people who got the original pandas. Mine are definitely the re, they're saying the re-released pair, one of the many re-released pairs with the plastic, uh, plastic lever and all that. Yeah. So it's not a great looking pair, but it's beat up. Mm. It's cooked. You get me? I've taken it to many different countries just because, do you know, the, the maddest thing, right? I'm even, I'm not even joking when I say this. I took this shoe to Mexico and I was like trekking, not trekking, but like walking through, doing like a guided tour of like the, um, where the, um, the Aztec bits used to be, right? I got more compliments on my kicks than I've got on any kicks. Bro, I'm not even being, I'm not even joking on a panda, mm. on a panda. It's like, nice kicks. I'm like, really? On a panda? Pila. Bro, it's what people yeah, like, man. Bro. You, you got to bear in mind, like, the industry now is a lot less, like, it's a lot less, it's a lot less subculture It's a lot more mainstream, right? So. That's super mainstream. So when that's when straight, mainstream bro. comes in, it's mainstream is a bad. Like mainstream is is marketable, right? That's that's how trends. Yeah. Move. That's how, that's how brands dictate what they go for. Like bearing in mind that it's now become that it it's it just shows that that's what people are into. I mean, people could be wearing, you know, look at people now. People are saying that they're like sambas. I mean, sambas are nothing. Really, nah, you think about it. Like, yeah, oh, I like your shoes. It's just a black and white pair of sambas. Like, real talk. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 all part of the game. I don't think like I don't think either shoes bad. Like at all. No. But what what I do think is that people have a different appreciation to what say someone like yourself might have over kicks right you might see someone wearing a pair of i don't know like anything let's just say like a, a an air yeezy 2 or something like that and you're like you know the, the level of appreciation you have that is is far more synonymous because of the the affiliation you have with like your, your love for kanye and the love for the industry and the love for the actual game and the fact that it's an unattainable shoe compared to someone that might not even know that exists and I think that's I think that's where that the panda is so successful is you don't have to be into the game to know that it's actually just a pretty solid shoe. It's a black and white shoe. Solid shoe. Man. I mean, if you look at the pairs that I showed you, they're like I said, they're black, grey, and black and grey. Yeah. And the panda is a, just a black and white shoe. There's nothing, nothing crazy about it. I mean, the shoe I did with Kahu is just a grey shoe. Like they don't have to be crazy. I think it's just. Bro, New Balance do a whole grey pack. <laughs> it's like it yeah, for real, yeah, bro. Day. Like they have grey day, like literally, like yeah, yeah. And I've and I, and for me, like, and I completely get where you're coming from, and I agree entirely. I feel like um, sometimes in the culture, uh, sneakheads and and all of that sort of stuff. Sometimes we can be a little snobbish or whatever the term is, elitist maybe, and we can start turning our nose up at certain silhouettes because of their popularity and because of their perceived idea of them not necessarily having a huge amount uh, a story behind yeah. them or a huge amount of marketing behind them like so it's like oh is that shoe like really a shoe it's almost like what the, the what in music they would call like an industry plant it's like it's just coming to make loads and loads of money for the brand 
and not necessarily have any real longevity sort of thing. But the truth of the matter is, it is it is part of a long lineage of of great silhouette of a, a great silhouette in the dunk, right? And it's and 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 it's a colorway that's easily wearable. So I get it, I do get it. And when it first came out, like during lockdown, when when like uh, like when the 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 high version came out and then the low version came out, when people like when it was fully like there was like hysteria around it. I got it. I understood it. Cause it was like, oh, we love the dunk. Oh, now we've got a black and white pair. Everyone can wear a yeah. dunk now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I get it, bro. I get it, man. It's part of the so, game, man. It's part of Yeah, man. I think, I think like people need to take a lot of that kind of stuff into consideration. I think you put it, I think you articulated it really nicely, right? By saying like, there's a, there's an air in this game now of like elitism. Um, whether that's because you think you know more, because you have more means to be able to access these pairs, because financially more stronger than somebody else to be able to buy those pairs like whatever it may be there's just this is this is really stinky aroma going around and people thinking that they're better than other people like and that can go all the way down to people being a part of different community groups and saying like oh i'm part of this group it's better than that group it, it was never a competition um ever mm. especially since i got into it it's never been a competition and if i speak to anyone prior it's never been a competition yeah you protect you know some people are protective over their spots but that wasn't a case of trying to you know be better than you it's just because they didn't want then everybody to then sell out and they couldn't buy anything from their spots like they had their own they, it was a different game and I think the more people come to understand that you can just like whatever you like. Like I said, the, the, some of the shoes like Norders, for example, I know no one rates Norders like that in this in our in our game. Like no one likes it like that. The people that like it are like your Gorp Court kids, your fashion kids, your mm, 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 that's mm. the people that are into it. Or you got the little sweaty nerds like me that are into it for like the technology side of it. But you know, I I don't walk around going to like I'll go to events wearing Norders all the time. I don't care if anyone likes them or not like it what does it matter like i could wear galaxy foams or or or, you know a pink aluminium air max ones or or skunk dunks like all pairs that i own to these events to try and get clout but in reality it doesn't make me any better than the next man that's wearing a pair of converse a pair of pandas or you know whatever they might be wearing it's just i think we need to really like bring that stigma back down and put people's like like shake up people's egos a little bit and just knock themselves off pedestals, man. Because in reality, mm. it's supposed to be a really inclusive, like fun game to be a part of. And I think these days now, not a lot of people. I mean, I think it's a minority now. I like, to, I like to think anyway. People can tell me otherwise, but I think there's this, there's the minority. Unfortunately, I think outshines on this kind of like nastiness. Um, and sort of like better than people that I think just needs to yeah bring themselves back down on a level and and enjoy it for what it is. I completely agree. I absolutely agree. I think um I've got a pretty interesting perspective because like even though I've loved kicks for I mean as long as I can remember, I wouldn't necessarily have said maybe like five years ago that I felt part of the the, the sneaker community in the UK. I feel like that sort of more happened since I started creating content mm-hmm. and sort of started putting myself out there in that in that regard. And since doing that, I have to say for the most part, similar to what you were saying earlier on, like I felt like a huge amount of love and 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 and, and respect from from my peers and and from the people in the in the culture. But that being said, like I completely get where you're coming from your statements in regards to sort of like there are elements of that whole like we don't we don't we don't we don't rock with those whether it be kicks or people we don't we don't wear those and it's like like maybe it's because i'm a little bit older and i'm i'm securing who i am it's like nah i just i just wear what i like and i do what i want and we just keep moving like that. Well, it's get me always like... been about, bro. Like, it's, it's always been about liking what you like. Like, for example, be at school, like I was saying before, my mates would buy triple white Harachis and triple black Harachis because that's what mm. they liked, right? But I didn't mm. like the triple white and I didn't like the triple black. I wanted to go buy the colorways that I did like and that was fine. And like Moab packs, like slate pairs, wings and waffles, like all that kind of stuff. Colorways that I thought were cool. 
And like, I didn't care if anyone did or didn't like the shoe, like pairs of gel like freeze that no one cares about, or, you know, hawkers or Oakley's like all mm. that kind of stuff. I don't care whether you like the Oakley chop saw mule, like, or not. Like I, I like it. I'm Jeez. aware of it. Like it is what it is. I love it, man. I respect it's that. It's always more. been, I think that's the part where people kind of lose their way a little bit is where you feel like you have to buy into the trend in order to be a part of the trend. And I think that's, that's, I think where the more mainstream side of the culture has started to like inform it rather than it just being an individual thing. And I think we're now coming to a point. I like to think we're coming to almost like a tail end of that point. It, it, let's exclude Samba from this because there's always mm-hmm. going to be a trend focus like a panda, for example. But I like to think that as, as times are slowly starting to re-evolve within this industry and within this like space as a community, we're starting to see a lot more individualism once again. And mm-hmm. people are now mm-hmm. starting to buy into new brands like Kahu, like Mizuno, like Sokini, stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying new brands in terms of they're new to the scene, but I mean new brands in terms of like they took a back seat for quite some time. And the front no, were the front runners. Completely. And agree. now you're getting yeah. some pe- more people into Salad, more people into Hocker, more people like looking at brands like Ultra, like what like you know, I'm I'm gonna say Norder again because Norder is, is is one of those new brands that footwear retailers are buying into, like you mm. your offsprings, your foot patrols or, or anywhere, and everyone's got this pair of shoes now. And I think it's I think it's just a case of well, not even a case, but I think the reality is is that we're we're starting to re evolve and almost go back in time right we're trying to do this this whole nice really lovely life circle where we've started we've gone from the trends and now we're going back to the individuality that mm. industry came mm. and i can only honestly industry came with sorry and i can only hope that that then encourages and, and this encourages people to be more open-minded but also at the same time discourages that concept of people saying i've got something you haven't because what does it matter? There's always going to be something new on this market anyway, and you probably don't. Always. So, like, at the same time, who cares? Like, in the grand scheme. Well said, G. Well said. I'm up. I'm going to apologize for something I'm about to say right now. Your house is about to burn down, and you can only grab one. What are you taking? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably my car who. I've got a lot of good. Stuff I've it. got a, a lot of got a, a lot of well, not here, but spread across three houses. But a lot of good stuff. Um, but if I had a, uh, if I had to, if I had to get a pair, I mean, I've got pairs that are probably harder to replace. But I think I just the sentimentality of that shit. Yeah, bro, I get it. I get it. I get it, man. Otherwise, it'll probably yeah. be my Galaxy phone posit. That would probably be the next pick. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. Let's let's let, let, let's let's keep the the sort of um, weird and wonderful questions going, bro. Imagine, yeah, right. This is my favorite question. This is desert island kicks, right? Imagine you're you're like stranded on a desert island. Mm-hmm. And you, you you don't know how you got there, but you got two pairs of kicks with you. They don't necessarily have to be from your collection. They can be any two pairs of kicks you want them to be. But what two pairs of kicks would you have with you, and why? Uh, Norder because I need to traipse through them sands. I need to traipse through that sand, man. I need that. I need that. Yeah, I saw that midsole. That midsole was a thick hard boy. Body shoe to get me through that hard body terrain. Hard body. <laughs> I need that. Uh, but then if I could probably take anything else, it'll probably be a shoe I don't have more so for the fact to then just say I have it. Um, and it, that would be between a Taijian uh, phone posit with the Buddha on the sides, like China exclusive, Jeez. or um, that, these are like my top two grails, the Taijian phone posit, or it'd be the Para Air Max 1 Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, pretty That's weird. like my two top like my two top pairs that I think I would. The power is crazy. The power is crazy. I love that. Crazy. Now. So, 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 so much. I, I was so close to buying a pair and then I bottled it and bought, bought a jacket instead. Yeah, the money's crazy. As yeah, well. I mean, this pair was actually cheap because someone burnt through the midsole. So I was like, I'm going to just. Oh, was you going to resole it? Yeah, basically. They were going to be like, oh, like 450, yeah. but they wouldn't. Like, I just I did, couldn't get the money in time before they sold. Oh, first, first, first. But yeah, that that would probably be be them. Man. It'd be one of them two just hung off the back of my bag to be like, yeah, I'll still. Like, for for where you get for where you get rescued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it. I could be like fancy in it at a rescue party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro. What about you? What about you? 
See, this is what people are doing in 2024. Why are you turning it on me, G? Why are you turning it? <laughs> oh, my days, man. I don't know what's happened in 20... People are getting bold. <laughs> getting bold <laughs> Man's getting bold. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Do you know what year, right? Um, I made a decision. Literally, this is like the 10th time this has happened this year. So, like, I need to get used to it now. Um, in terms, in terms of the um, uh, the shoes to take, I would most definitely take a pair of foam runners. Um, yeah, I'll take a pair of foam runners. They're over there. I'll take a pair of foam runners because, like, um, land, sea, like, they're just, like, I feel like in terms of, like, uh, the... the, the the sort of tropical elements of a, of a rainforest or, or 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 a desert island, I feel like they could cover me in a couple of areas. Mm. Um, the other shoe that I would take, similar to yourself, because I'm of the mindset that okay, I need one shoe that I can just rock around in, and I just need another shoe that for when I get um, rescued. You get me? But I'm going to take it a different direction. I'm going with the Paris Dunks. reason I'm going with the Paris Dunks is because I'm going to use that 100k to set up my new life. Because I'm going to need... That's the realest answer. <laughs> I'm going to need, need, need to set up a, 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 a whole new thing. You get me? I've been, I am saying, cast away like Tom Hanks for however long, bro. I'm going to need to set my whole thing up. You get me? Yeah. I back that answer <laughs> so much. It's the, probably the realest thing anyone... Ain't no one telling me they're buying a pair. They're getting a pair of Paris dogs and they're selling them like, bro. Straight away. Straight away. A mortgage, whatever you want. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. Like I was saying, like, please don't, don't cancel me for that. I will sell those <laughs> shoes respectfully. Look at my some second. <laughs> don't lie to yourself. You get me now. I respect it, man. Save Bradley for that. Um, but yeah, bro. Let's do some quick fires. Go on. Uh, before we before we before we wrap up, man, uh, these quick fires are like they've been designed and formulated to just like bum 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 bum. But what I need from you, broski, yeah, right? No dilly dally, straight from the chest. Right, right, just right. Pew, pew, pew. you get me. I respect it. All right. All right, let's do this. Let's do this, and we are going in three, two, one. Start off big, Nike or Adidas. Nike. New Balance or Adidas? New Balance. So can you New Balance? New Balance. Can you wear Adidas and Nike together, yes or no? Oh, yeah, don't care less. Okay, what was your last sneakers win? Uh, uh, off-white Jordan 4. That's decent, decent, decent. Um, what is your Jordan number? What is your favourite Jordan? Uh, four. Respect it. YouTube, Instagram or TikTok? Uh, Instagram. Sneakers, kicks, or crepes? Uh, kicks. Spotify or Apple? Spotify. Favorite collaboration? Harrow Air Max One. Vans or Converse? Vans. Laces or slip ons? Laces. Are you doing default laces or are you doing patterns with your laces? Uh, default. Customizing your shoes or straight factory settings? Uh, for factory settings. Retro or innovation? Or innovation. Flip flops or sliders? Sliders. Socks or barefoot? Socks always, always. Comfort. Always. Come. Always. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Try to make me break. All right. Socks or barefoot? Socks. Oh, so there is. He's done. Done me. Done me. Head's gone. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the game, master mode. Uh, comfort or style? Comfort. Fresh and clean or beaten and battered? Uh, freshly clean. Love it. Washing machine or hand wash? Uh, hand wash. Lows, mids or highs? Lows. And lastly, triple blacks or white and whites? White and white. Congratulations, Bradley Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> You managed to come through this, man. Slightly unscathed, man. You did make mention of a certain thing. We're going to touch on it because I do want to get your opinion yeah, on this. Because cool. I feel like in 2024, there are a lot of, like, different nouveau opinions in regards to this. And I just need to understand from your perspective. I did ask you, 
and part of this is me just making sure you understood the question right you, i'm saying that because technical difficulties as well sometimes <laughs> you get me people yeah, don't hear yeah, what yeah, i'm saying yeah, just got to double check you, get check. Me? you just want to double check <laughs> that everything was cool on your end, didn't it? <laughs> right. Um, I asked you, can you wear knack and Adidas together? Yes or no? And you said... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't, right. couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and you'll just elaborate a little bit more on that. Like, what's, what's going on? Because like, I, I don't think the vibe that you're an axe murderer, but I might be wrong. So it is what it is. So, like, just explain to me, like, you get me, like, just explain to me what, what's the thinking behind that. Well, it kind of goes to the question, like, comfort over style, right? Like, if it's comfy, then, like, I couldn't give a damn what the hell is I'm wearing. Like, it, right now, I've got a Mizuno top, a Nike, a Nike pant, and I think Mizuno socks. Like, if I can wear other brands together, why can't I wear them two together? It's not like Adidas and Nike are telling me that I can't wear them two brands together. I, I would be more concerned if you was wearing Puma and Adidas together because them man actually had feet. So this is actually such an interesting perspective and I actually do kind of kind of rock with it a little bit because on the face of it, yes, Adidas and Puma are legitimately, like, that is brotherly beef. Yeah. That is actual, like, physical beef, mm -hmm. right? Um, and Nike and Adidas just have a perceived beef where re in reality... They haven't been competing against each other um, in a real sense for a very, very long time. Uh, so I do get where you're coming from. It's just one of them things that it's just always been in my mind and in me. We've grown up with this thing that you just can't wear three straps and a swoosh together, bro. It just don't make sense. And it doesn't, it doesn't work the same with other brands. I never had that thought with Adidas and Puma or Adidas and Mizuno or Adidas and New Balance. I never had that thought with Nike or and Reebok. Mm. Like, just never comes to mind. But with Nike and Adidas, it always, there is a perceived notion that those are the two biggest brands in sports and therefore you can't wear them together because yeah. they are competing. But I don't know if that's true for anyone. Nah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of people out there. I know a lot of people that would swear by that, right? They wouldn't do it. But, like, in my head, I'm just like, well, I don't like it. It's not that, it's not that deep. Like, like no one ain't yeah. no one paying me on either of their parties to not wear the two brands together. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm aware the two brands together. Like it's you know, until someone pays me to do so then, then I respect like, it. Have you ever have you ever worn Nike to an Adidas event? Yeah, loads. I'm like, really? Uh, yeah. You're a mad nah, man. Well, sometimes I ain't got <laughs> sometimes I ain't got the shoes on me. Do you know what I mean? Like I respect it. Do you know what yeah? When I'm on that, bro, hundred percent man, I need to roll with I need to roll with Bradley, bro. <laughs> Cause I, I remember I was talking to somebody and they were like, Oh, I was gonna do a an Adidas event and I had to literally just go and buy some Adidas. I was like, Would I literally go buy shoes to do to go to an event? Man, I mean look, Would I buy shoes to go to I an event? To, I used to go to like fashion week, right? Mm -hmm. And then you would take a pair of shoes pretty much for every brand and then i actually started to realize you know what i understand that there's an element of like you want to show support but i also think there's an element of like you're looking too eager it's like mm. you can like what you can still like what the launch is about and what the product is for even though you're not wearing or you're not being on brand don't get me from my perspective on a business side of things like when it's just me on my own going to these events, then yeah, I probably, I don't really care whether I am wearing Nike or Adidas or whatever. But if I'm going on like a brand perspective, like for football, I I've got to be a little bit more conscious because there's a brand rep there that's probably going to be like, oh, well, you could have done more wearing that. But like in the grand scheme of things, like, it's not that deep for me. Like it also as well, like I might, not, you know, my personal taste might not be that I like the brand. Like some brands might say, I want you to wear this shoe. And I've had instances where i was asked to do sneakers day and i don't care really saying about this because like i said it sounds like a them problem more than it is a me problem but they asked me to do sneakers day and they sent me a pair of the harachi that they did because they knew i liked harachis at... mate don't tell me it was those cheetah those cheetah print Left yeah. print Harachis yeah. from a couple of years ago. Yeah, they sent me oh, them, and, and, I, and I flat out said to them, I said, uh, you know, and I wasn't rude about it. I said, look, I'm really sorry. I just don't have the confidence to be able to talk about this live on on the show. Um, I'm happy to resend the shoe back, not take the, you know, and you know, not not be paid for the the show, and then also not be appear as a guest if you'd prefer someone to talk about it. Like it doesn't that kind of stuff. Like I'm not just gonna. I'm not that type of guy that's just going to chase a bag just to 
break my own like tastes. Like if I don't like the shit, I, I, I ain't it. talking about it. Simple as that. Like it's just it is it is what it is. So like pay me or not, probably wouldn't wear the shoe. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. it's a weird one, man. Like I don't think it's that deep. I think people need to especially when you're not representing someone. Obviously if like I said, if you if I'm there going and represent Foot Patrol and I'm going to an Adidas event, I will probably wear Adidas because it's out of respect for it being a brand pond. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. it's me going on my own on my own terms as like Bradley the footwear enthusiast that just wants to go see kicks, I just I wear whatever because it's what's more readily available. The likely chances I probably go with a brand that isn't a competitor and that like I said it would probably be in order. And mm. no one can really tell me, saying, oh, you're wearing a competitor brand. I'm like, bro, you, these men aren't competing with no one. They, they're in their own lane. They're in their own yeah. lane entirely. They're I respect that. One thing you're looking after another, like, is what is. It's why you tend to see people, the neutral shoe in the industry is um, is a Clarks. Cheat code. Because I love if, if you look, think about it, right, Clarks aren't really, like, trainers or kicks. Um no, but you're absolutely so. Right. Like you, you'll find a lot of people as the neutral shoe would would be would be a pair of Clarks. Like my old boss used to wear Visvims because, like, how can you tell him that he's wearing a competitive brand? Ain't no one making Vis like, ain't no one competing with Visvims. Visvim compete with Visvim. Like, so it's yeah. I, I think people deep it a little bit too much, man. But like I said, from a work perspective, then it's about being respectful too. And mm-hmm. I think that's where the, the professions and that's me being real. I mean, someone from a brand hears that then. You know, I think it's a case about being a little bit more real with these kinds of things and it is trying to try and um, blow smoke up people's backsides for, for no apparent reason. Yeah, I fully respect that, G. I fully respect that. Yeah, morals and, 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 and all of that stuff above all else, man. We're out here selling ourselves for the dollar. You get me, man? We keep it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> you get me? And I know for a fact that bag wasn't big enough. Yeah, people, man, pull your finger out. Yeah, if you want to get Bradley in them, Crazy. I mean, I see a print. I didn't wear the shoe though. I did say. I respect it. I respect it. Um, also, all like, let bless it, man. Like he, he even like we we was chatting about it, and and he he knew that I wasn't keen on the shoe, um, and he was like, oh, you know, like I like it. He was wearing it. He was here for it, and on purpose on the show, my man was like, oh, Bradley, what do you think of the shoe? <laughs> And I was like, this guy, and I was like, ah, oh, stylistically, man, they're not for me. But I get why people, I get that, you know. And then start to talk about the history. They're based on the Canadian exclusive, the Canada exclusive Air Max One, and like I like the story. Da, 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 da. I said like, you know, just a very bold shoe for me to be able to wear. Yeah, they were wild. Yeah. They were wild. <laughs> and to be fair, like sneakers, sneakers day kicks and Air Max day uh, uh, and Air Max day kicks have been a lot better since then. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but yeah. They are an anomaly. Ooh, I, don't that. I knew exactly what you were talking about when you went there. I said, "Bro, I remember because I was so disappointed." I thought that was like one of my earliest, like, um, like sneakers day memories, like, because I hadn't been following sneakers day for so many years. And uh, when I got back into the game, I remember like I don't know if it was that year or the year before, maybe the year before the might have been even the year before that. But I just remember that year. Just, just being so focused on sneakers day, and just being like super disappointed by that shoe, um, and and I believe it was the it was it was a it was a Harachi and an Air Force uh, One. Jordan. Uh, I was a, uh, it was a Jordan, Jordan one, one flight yeah. as well. So it wasn't like yeah. a Jordan one. Oh my days, yeah, it was. Oh my days, like it was. Yeah, it was just stress all over the gaff. Like, and I think it was actually Yeezy day, like a day before. And there was like just a mass amount on 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 uh, online. It was just a mass amount of people just comparing Yeezy Day and, and Sneakers Day, and just be like, what day was the best day? And everyone was like, Yeezy, Wait, Day, Yeezy day. killed. <laughs> yeah, Yeezy Day killed Sneakers Day that year. But yeah, yeah, things have changed since then, obviously. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, bro. Before I let you go, man. Once again, man. Just I fully appreciate your time. It's been like one of the most fun interviews I've had in such a long time. So I really do appreciate just like just being able to chat and vibe and and sort of get your candid opinion, man. So I do really, really appreciate it. Um, we did kind of allude to this a little bit earlier, man. But like, I, I, I just for completeness, obviously, I have to ask a question in terms of like sneakerhead. 
because it's a word that we band around or gets banded around in order to sort of uh, uh, just put a name to a group or, or a niche or a, a people in a community. From your perspective, just in terms of the word, what does it mean? What does it, what is a sneakerhead? Um, I never use the word, totally honest. Um, I find it a little bit like generalised. I think anyone can be a sneakerhead. I think like there's almost like different levels of it. Um, and I mean, I don't mean this in like in the this way. I mean, this more in a sense of like, in terms of how into it you are, right? I've never, if someone always says to me, you're a sneakerhead and I'd be like, oh, bro, I'm so much more than, I'm so much more than like just that coin phrase. Like I always describe it to people as like, I'm an enthusiast, like, like a car enthusiast, right? You're into the car, you're into how it's made, you're here to help you know how the engine works, like what size it is, like what year is it from, all that kind of stuff. And that's how I kind of see it. It's like anyone can be a sneakerhead. And I think for me, a sneakerhead is like uh, someone that just really likes trainers and like buys a lot of them. But I think that then you've got a sneakerhead and then you've got like an enthusiast. And I think there's a lot of people out there that I think are more enthusiast, footwear enthusiasts or train enthusiasts or sneaker enthusiasts than they are sneakerheads because of the level of detail that they that they want to know about it. It's they want to know where it's made. They want to know how it's made. They want to know the materials. They want to know the story behind it. They like telling that story. And I think that's where, for me, the line's always been drawn. It's like I've always seen people that write. There's people that like to buy them and have them stylistically, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is, again, it's no issue. And then there's another collective of individuals that like, like archive DNA, for example. Like, like mm. He wants to tell you that history is an archive in itself, right? And I always think that that's, that's the enthusiast mindset. Like you've got art enthusiasts, car enthusiasts, them man are like into what they do on a different level to than just buying cars. Anyone can be a car collector, but are you a car enthusiast to the point where you want to know why that, like, what the in and out of that is? And I think that's how I compare the two. So sneakerhead, I think, like I said, is, is more of a, a generalized term. I think I see, I hear it a lot from brands, sneakerhead, sneakerhead, sneakerhead. And I'm just like, you just basically trying to say the word consumer but cooler uh, mm. but then i think there's yeah there's then i think there's a lot of people who i would say are more enthusiasts that like just got a deeper a deeper connection and a deeper sort of like level of wanting to know more about it i get you man and to be honest i've never heard it broken down in that way i completely understand where you're coming from but i mean i've got to ask the question in that regard Considering how you've described it, would you class yourself as a sneakerhead? Uh, once upon a time, I think I would have definitely done. Um, I don't buy anywhere near as much as I did now. Uh, not for any reason. I just, you know, I live on my own. Um, that in itself costs a lot more money. I think my values <laughs> in terms of what I want in life are a little bit like uh, slightly changed, right? I think for me now, it's it's investing in things that I really want. You know, if I'm going to pay 220, 230 pounds for a pair of, you know, a pair of shoes, like I really want them to be a pair of shoes that I genuinely want that I know I'm genuinely going to wear and I really enjoy the story or the materials and everything like that. So I've always then tried to look at it from a different perspective where if I don't buy as much as what I used to, what is it that I am buying into if it's not like actually spending my money? And that is always the storytelling. That is always the technology, the, the, the product side of it. Right. And where I like to spend my money, for example, on on like trying to do races to try and set myself goals, to try and complete something new. That's where I'm then like, right. Okay, cool. Then my interest is more in like the development, how that product's going to help me benefit me as a user. And I think, I would say for me, I've always said that I'm more of an enthusiast because my level is Mm. more than just trying to buy shoes for the sake of buying shoes and collecting them now. It's more about trying to understand like how they work and and what their purpose is for within like within their current, well, what their purpose is for as like a product within the current market or previous markets before that. Respect that, man. I respect that, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You've broken it down deeper, man. <laughs> so we can say we can say Kicks Chronicles certified sneaker enthusiast Bradley <laughs> Bradley Martinez came through from Foot Patrol and did his thing, man. Just a massive thank you to you, my bro. Like literally, 
Um, can't thank you enough. I don't know. I mean, maybe like four or five million people are going to watch this, listen to it. Like, you might want to tell them what you got going on in your life. You might want to tell them where they can connect with you, man. Talk to the people, bro. No, I mean, first of all, shout out to you, bro. Like, I think what you're doing is great. And I think the, the storytelling element that wanting to try and keep it real with individuals, I think you do really well, man. Like, it's, it's evident that people's skills are your strong suit big time, man. Um, and like I said to you at the start, I don't, I don't get to do these very often. Um, I'm very grateful for the people that have asked me to come and do them. And I'm very grateful for yourself to, to let me come and, and share my story. I appreciate I never, that, man. Thank you. You know, I don't see myself as like some sort of like industry entity that people might think like, oh, they work for there. Like I've always seen myself as the same kid that was trying to buy shoes the same as everyone else and learn about it the same as everybody else and, and try and work in it the same as, you know, a lot of people as well. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful that people find and people like self find my interest, uh, my story interesting and, and find it like something worth listening to. Cause I always find that I just, I love to waffle uh, and I'm really bloody good at it too. Um, but nah, um, thank you. And, and yeah, in terms of stuff coming, I mean, yeah, keep, keep an eye out for patrol, man. I mean, we, we got a lot more coming out in terms of like, which is quite relevant for me, like trying to do a lot more with the running, uh, running side of stuff. Just relaunched our Soho Run Club uh, with Cafe Vins uh, every Sunday, 10 a.m. down at Cafe Vins, just off Great Marlborough, uh, not Great Marlborough Street, Marble Court, uh, just off mm. Carnaby every Sunday, which is great. Got loads of activations coming down from that. And then, yeah, like I said, I'm fortunate, fortunate enough to, to now be the marketing manager for Foot Patrol. So, yeah, hopefully, I like to think, fingers crossed, watch this space. There's hopefully going to be some 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 good stuff coming out from us as a brand and trying to just, you know, do do quality over quantity and, and try and, you know, reinvigorate the the life behind the gas mask. Um, but outside of that, man, like, just, just, just me being me, you'll see me cutting about the streets, dressed like a prep ready running like um trying to run around like with my bald ass head out like you'll see me knocking around somewhere in it don't be afraid to say hello i'm always down to i'm always down to have a chat nine times out of ten if i'm not running around like a headless chicken and um i appreciate to all those that you know all those people that have spoken to me or have enjoyed having these kind of conversations i'm i'm just incredibly grateful that you know people support um and the people that i do know that do support me i'm I, it means a lot you know when I put a link up when a LinkedIn post saying that I got a new job and I saw some of the names that are in there, there was a lot of people that I was like, right, I didn't actually think you was paying attention. Um, and I don't mean that in any way. It's just, you don't, I don't know, LinkedIn's a corporate thing to say, but it's. No, oh, bro. Yeah, no, I, I get you. It's interesting. I fully really do. Like, it's interesting. I'm very grateful. Uh, very, very grateful for it. But yeah, like if you ever need a chat, um, whether that's life, whether that's work, whether that's whatever, um, struggling with mental health, like let me know. Like I'm a mental health I stay there, I like to help where I can and it's a big part of my life too. But yeah, man, I just yeah, like I said, probably really appreciate the time and I I really enjoyed this conversation. This was it was good crack. Oh no. Uh yeah, I've 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 loved it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've absolutely loved it, man. So yeah, guys, yeah, this is another episode of Kicks Chronicles, the last year's guest. You get me? I, I, I don't even know if I got, I, can't, I need to find a deeper word than a last year. Because at the start of the thing, he was a last year. So I think it's even deeper now. You get me? Like, we've been through the trenches, man. A couple of hours deep. You get me? So it's certainly a two part of people. Just know from now. You get me, man? But yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, guys, make sure to do all of those great things. You know, like, comment, subscribe. We'll continue to uh, support the podcast and we'll continue to continue to reach out. To, to some of these titans of industry and, and, and community and uh, I'm saying like and, and get some of these insights man this guy was dropping gems respectfully man and it's just been really really cool um in, in so many different aspects so yeah people um yeah make sure to look after yourself obviously like I said like comment or subscribe probably already but if not do it five star reviews that's all I'm interested in even if you don't like the show like <laughs> <laughs> even, if like even if you don't like it anyway. 
give the five stars and tell me what you don't like in the five star bit. Yeah, <laughs> just tell me under. Otherwise, I'm not gonna see it. I'm just being respectful and real. You get me, like, and yeah, we'll fix it up. You get me, you will fix it up, man. And once again, a massive thank you to Bradley Martinez. Shout out to Foot Patrol. And until I see all of you, man, down the road, everyone look after yourselves and stay blessed. Thank you for listening to this episode of Kicks Chronicles. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, rate, review and all that good stuff. And remember, full video version is available on YouTube, audio version is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.